Aloha and welcome to Stan Energy Man. Stan Osterman here from the Hawaii Center for Advanced Transportation Technologies. Emphasis on the advanced stuff because this is a moonshot for us today. I'm trying to Skype in from our uh, our warehouse space in Takaako, our conversion space. And what we're going to do here is um, I'm going to introduce some young folks to you that uh, are coming to us from the Center for Tomorrow's Leaders. And they're actually helping us convert a GEM, Polaris uh, GEM electric low speed vehicle uh, to run on a hydrogen fuel cell. So it's an electric vehicle with a battery pack, 48 volt battery system. But we also have photovoltaics on the roof to charge the batteries. And we have a hydrogen fuel cell, one kilowatt, to also power, uh, charge up the battery. So essentially this vehicle can go about 40 miles um, just on a battery charge. Uh, we should be able to get it to do another maybe 200 with the hydrogen power. And as long as we keep it parked in the sun, we'll just keep getting the battery charged by the, the solar panels. So this thing can go pretty far with uh, almost no outside inter interference or influence and uh, just a squirt of hydrogen from time to time. But anyway, let me get started by uh, letting my team introduce themselves. These are the folks from the Hawaii um, Center for Tomorrow's Leaders. There's part of a special program of high school students that uh, Rachel James and I have uh, been working uh, with to kind of get them ready for college and, and things beyond. So we're just trying to do our, our bit to get them into the real world and away from just academics. So let's start off by introducing ourselves. Hi, my name is Julia. I'm going to be a senior at Kaipa High School. Yeah. Hi, my name is Will. I just graduated from McKinney High School. I will be attending the University of Hawaii at Wyoming. What's your major going to be, Will? Chemistry. Chemistry major. Okay. So, uh, my name is Joker Chan, and I'm going to be a uh, freshman at UH Manoa, and I'm going to be studying uh, kinesiology with uh, maybe a minor in environmental sciences. Hi, I'm going to be a senior. So, this is a great team. Uh, Rachel and I have been working with them for, wow, almost a year now, at least nine months or so. And we've been to, working on this project. They actually helped us pick the vehicle uh, and interviewed the folks at uh, Montgomery Power Sports where we picked the vehicle up from and talked to them about marketing and what it's like to market these kind of vehicles and what, what the customer's input is into the system and how they can influence the way manufacturers build things. So we've, we've had a lot of uh, time with them, a lot of good call, quality time, and they've put in a lot of work after hours to make things happen. They're also documenting, so we're doing a little bit of our own video now so they can put a production together, and they'll keep taking this production on the road with them to introduce people to hydrogen technology. So what we're going to do now is just talk about what we're going to be going through. And I'm going to turn a little bit here and show you. We have this rack back here. We're going to be mounting the hydrogen fuel cell in this rack, and we'll bring the parts out. We also have a, it's right now it's a propane tank, but it's, low, it's going to be low pressure hydrogen. So we won't put anything high pressure in here. It'll be pure hydrogen that goes in from our Millennium Rain unit. And why is it we want pure hydrogen? To, yeah, if you mix it with oxygen, you have an oxidizer in there, it's flammable or it can be yeah. explosive. So this will hold pure hydrogen, so it won't be flammable inside the tank. It's only flammable outside when it mixes with air. So we'll have this strapped down on the top, and it'll have a hose coming out of here going to our fuel cell. Over in this part of the rack, we're going to have um, the controller unit, and the bottom part is going to be our uh, hydrogen fuel cell. So actually, why don't Giorgio and Leo go grab the, the two components and we'll slide them in. And then we'll show you where we're going to put them on the vehicle and, and we'll also talk a little bit uh, about, while they're getting that, we'll talk about the photovoltaics. Um, this vehicle came with three panels. They're 100 watt um, uh, flexible um, photovoltaic panels. Okay, And they're on the roof, they're mounted on the roof and we're going to wire them up. Okay, let's put the top one in first. So these, these are rack mounted, they're, they're just like a computer uh, or a telecommunications rack. They slide right in there. All right. All right. And it slides right in there. So when it's all set up, it's going to look just like this. And you notice that we've got labels on everything and where things are going to plug in. We're just going to have to match up the colors and the, and the labels. It's all numbered, and it's uh, just a few quick connections, and we'll have it all plugged in and ready to go. 
So this is what the unit will look like. Our big challenges right now are to figure out where we're gonna, how we're gonna mount this, and um, and how we're gonna get it in the back because we will have some wires coming out of the back, and we've kind of looked at a couple options here. So why don't you guys explain what we, our final decision was? How we're gonna, how we're gonna maneuver this here? Show them, show them where it's gonna go. Okay, so um, we're basically gonna move this one sideways. And uh, we're gonna put, I don't know if you guys can see it, but all the way in the back. Yeah, yeah. okay. So, all the way in the back. Okay. okay, so then the tank is gonna be facing um, the outside so you can feel it um, better. And there's also the control panel on the outside. And on the back, there's gonna be the wiring that is gonna go back to the battery. Okay, so for this vehicle, the batteries are actually underneath the driver's seat and the passenger seat in the, in the compartment. And we have, uh, the driver's seat is, is out right now, so we can connect to the battery terminal there that goes right to the battery, um, the, the connecting point for the battery with a charger. So essentially what we're doing is, right now, this vehicle is a plug-in electric. You plug it into a regular wall outlet and it charges um, the batteries up. But what we're gonna be adding are two more chargers. We're gonna have the photovoltaic charger and we're gonna have the fuel cell charger. So basically what I need to do is connect to the same place that the other charge unit connects right now. And that's a simple positive to positive, negative to negative. And it's right underneath the driver's seat. So turning the rack like this and having it set up, it's a quick run, only probably three feet from the back of this unit here under the driver's seat to where we hook, to, hook up to the batteries. So it's a pretty quick connect. And let's talk a little bit about the photovoltaics. I don't know, it's kind of hard to see, you can see the back of them. They're right up here. But we have three panels, they're 100 watt panels and they're running sideways. Uh, in, there's one, one in the front, one in the middle, one in the back, and it's curved a little bit. I need the rack for it with a little curve to it because the curve will give it some stability. Um, I've seen these mounted on top of small vehicles like this with a flat panel, and they bounce around a lot, and they flap a lot. This will give a, the curve gives it like an arch to a, a building, gives it a little bit more st stability, and it, it'll only flex in, uh, in, in one direction, and it'll stay nice and stable hopefully make those panels last a little bit longer and give us a little bit of protection from the rain as well. So, um, I tell you what, Julia, can you grab those ratchet straps and we'll show people how the tank's gonna go on. We'll show you how we're gonna mount the tank and then we'll show you some of the connections that we've got, that we've got to make and we'll uh, we'll show you how fast this could, conversion can actually be. This is the one we put up the Yeah. Okay, so, so it'll have two straps on there to hold it down nice and tight. And why don't we get the, the connectors, the heavy duty ones on the left, with the red and white, uh, red and black uh, wires on it. Yep, that's the one, bring, bring all those. Okay, so we've got these two sets of cables here. This set connects the controller to the fuel cell. And this set connects the, the uh, fuel cell charger to the batteries. And then this is a regular communications, like in a regular computer connector. that connects, uh, again, a controller to the fuel cell. So, like I say, these are all color coded. So this one goes back in.
And of course, we have to get the little screwdriver, tiny screwdriver, and tighten everything down. But you can see that's only a couple of connections that go from the controller to the fuel cell, the uh, control command cable, and then uh, power cable. What we'll do is we'll also be hooking up some hydrogen lines. Probably after the break, we'll hook up a hydrogen lines and show you how that works. That so would we'll go from the tank into the fuel cell. There's an, it's really straightforward. There's an in and a, and, a, and a drain line. So we'll just have to connect up to the input and we're, we're pretty much ready to go. We need some hydrogen in the tank and we can rock and roll with that. But it's a pretty quick conversion. What we're gonna do is uh, after we sign off on the, on the show today, we're gonna actually bolt all this stuff onto the, the, the frame and get everything ready. And uh, by this afternoon, these guys will be able to take a spin around Kakaako in this thing and uh, at least charge with the solar panels. So uh, we'll, we'll be doing that after the show's over. So let's let's take a little bit of a break here and just talk about what Center for Tomorrow's leaders, you know, what you guys got out of the program a little bit. Because that was a, a little bit of time you invested in. And you know, it was it worthwhile to you? What kind of experiences you have? And if Giorgio got to go to, and, and uh, make a couple presentations and actually step by and, and give a tour of the vehicle to a bunch of folks at the, for the Honolulu Club. Uh, was, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, now talk a little bit about the experience. Start with Georgia. Okay, okay, so my experience. Okay. <laughs> Start the center just for you. Okay, yeah, so my experience uh, with the center for tomorrow's years is basically um, it made me like a lot more open minded, but especially with like uh, with like energy in general, because this is a topic that people don't really like to talk about because you know they wanna they wanna they wanna get things that are always cheap and you know affordable. But um, this one is a little bit more like towards the, the high end part. But then like if we're looking at the long run, then it's it's worth it to invest in it like right now. So then like as the technological advancements keep on improving, then eventually it can become like affordable. So um, it really uh, broadened my knowledge towards like energy and sustainability in general. And um, it was a pretty fun experience. Yeah. Yeah, and the technology will start to get cheaper and cheaper. Um, Toyota and other car companies, they're in production right now. They wouldn't be in production if the technology hadn't gotten cheap enough. In fact, um, two weeks ago, I heard a, a commentary that the amount of platinum used in the fuel cells for the cars now it is about equal to the amount of platinum in a catalytic converter that's already in your cars now to clean up your, your exhaust um, in your current car. Yeah. So that, that was a 95% reduction in platinum. And platinum is the expensive part of a lot of this technology, so it's already gotten quite a bit cheaper. But like like uh, Georgia says, it's going to get a lot cheaper uh, as time goes by, and new technologies start to replace our current technologies, and we can start doing some uh, some really cosmic things. So, okay, Leo, what about you? What I really like about CCO is that um, I got to really connect with the outside leaders. So, for example, I got to work with. I got to work with um, HCAD to build this vehicle, working about my peers, flat out, the environment project, and of course, uh, public speaking, which really helped me grow up as a kid. CTO for me, I really enjoyed it because it exposed me to like an array of different projects, and especially such intricate projects like this, I had no idea that I had the capability of doing. But to be able to come here from CTO to work with um, outside leaders like they said has been a great opportunity that I would have never gotten anywhere else. So. I just like to add on to what Kylie and you and Giorgio said. Um, it gave me the confidence of that I can you know, spread myself and try to learn different things I'm not used to and stuff that I'm not good at. So like working on a project like this was heavily science. And having confidence enough to convert it gave me a lot of confidence in myself that I could do a lot more than I thought I would. Well, we're going to take a quick break now. We'll be back in 60 seconds to talk some more with the Center for Tomorrow's Leaders on my lunch hour. Hello, everyone. I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. 
Living in this crazy world So caught up in the confusion Nothing is making sense For me and you Maybe we can find a way There's got to be solution How to make a brighter day Hey, welcome back to Stan Energy Man on my lunch hour as usual with Center for Tomorrow's Leaders and uh, our vehicle conversion. We've actually, Rachel and I have been anticipating this for a long time. It took us uh, several months to get the vehicle and then several, several, several more months to get all the equipment in, but it finally came in from New Jersey. Um, it's actually commercial off the shelf um, stuff. The um, but It's a standard propane tank, of course, we probably should paint it red and put a big H on it. And, and have all the uh, safety stuff on there. We'll, we'll get around to that. Um, but for the amount of hydrogen we're storing, which is really a fraction of a kilogram, there's really not going to be a whole lot in here, and it'll be very low pressure. But this is a Horizon one kilowatt fuel cell, and you can you can buy them yourself. And um, they come in several different sizes. You can get one. It's one, two, three, and five kilowatt size. Uh, two kilowatts is probably decent for the average house. If you wanted to make your own uninterruptible power supply with some batteries at your house, um, you could put photovoltaics on your roof, just like they have on the roof of this vehicle. With any of the extra electricity, if you have a little electrolyzer, you can make your own hydrogen at home and store it in your tank. And then uh, you'd have free fuel for your vehicle all the time. You just photovoltaics, hydrogen, and, uh, and you're set to go. You can make your own fuel at home and uh, charge your vehicle up. So for folks that live off the grid and this vehicle is um, its just like a regular quad. You can get an electric quad nowadays. I think Bad Boy Buggies make some, and then Polaris and some of the other companies are making electric quads. They're full-on off-road vehicles. They're all electric, and you can do the same conversion uh, on those vehicles. Just I think most of them are 48 volt as a standard, and, and that's what we're trying to do is uh, stay with 48 volts. So this system here produces voltage up to around 50, I want to say 52 or 57 volts. Um, so it can charge the batteries up, and then it has a controller that cuts it out when it's when the batteries are full up. And uh, like I said, she'd get us uh, well over 200 miles on a, on the tank of, of hydrogen plus whatever the solar gives us. And if we get real desperate, we'll connect to Hawaiian Electric and, and throw some throw some apps in there uh, via the, the public utility. But we're gonna try not to do that. I think Rachel's gonna make me park this thing outside so we use the solar all the time. And we do run around a lot. We do a lot of uh, work at the state capitol and around the state office buildings, and we use this thing here in downtown. The low-speed vehicles are good up to 35 mile an hour zones. Um, it's actually, it's got a license plate, uh, electric vehicle license plate, so we, we can actually park in uh, for free at the meters. And um, it's, of course, you can't go in the HOV lane because that's not 35 miles an hour. We don't want to get in. Don't want to get yeah. in. But, um, but it's actually, it's just like a regular electric vehicle. And uh, I think a lot of people could do this. Um, it'd be a great project for uh, high school um, science classes if they want to try and do something like this. Maybe do a, a fundraiser, raise some money, and maybe get a used electric vehicle and do something like this, it'd be real easy to do. And uh, I think the, the kids have fun at least learning about hydrogen, learning about um, electric drivetrains, and, and today we'll finish up putting this thing together, and I think they'll have a good time the rest of today. So, again, um, this is the fuel cell part of it. It's really simple, it's got three modes in it. It's got a manual mode, it's got an automatic mode, and it's got um, uh, an intermediate mode that, that you kind of can program the way you want it. But basically you can turn it on and off manually, but we'll leave it in the auto mode. And in the auto mode, what it does is it takes the, the voltage off the batteries and it, it reads it. And if the batteries get too low of a voltage as they're drained down, it'll automatically kick the fuel cell in and start making electricity to recharge the batteries. And that's the mode we'll probably leave it in or off. And uh, if we're in the sun a lot, we'll just leave the fuel cell off. We'll make a little cover for it to keep the weather off of it. But these things are actually fairly weatherproof. They've got to be in a, in a shelter, but they're ruggedized. They're, their units are actually made for communication, telecommunications, like cell phone towers and other things where they can put a photo array or a tank of hydrogen out in the field. And between the batteries, the photo array, and the hydrogen, they can keep a cell phone tower going for months and months and never have to send anybody out to service it. So that's what most of this equipment is used for. 
but it adapts really well to either a house as an uninterruptible power supply or to a vehicle like this. So, you know, we talked about hydrogen a lot because that's kind of the unique thing about this technology over just batteries. So what's the one thing that you learned about hydrogen that really surprised you or, or you know, that you really were impressed by? Um, I was impressed that you can use hydrogen in multiple ways. You find it everywhere. It's just abundant on it. And I didn't know you could use it as a fuel source to charge your car or you could use it in your house. Yeah, you can even cook with it. You could, yeah. You could actually, um, uh, Blue Planet on the Big Island has a propane tank. And they hook it up to their walk burner and they can actually cook lunch and have lunch over there and they cook it up with hydrogen fuel. And also when you make the hydrogen, if you use an electrolyzer, you're making pure oxygen that's medical grade. So they can even use the oxygen for welding or medical. So even when you make the hydrogen, like you say, it's the most common element in the universe, but it's also almost always attached to something else. Yeah. The most common thing is water. So so what else did you learn about hydrogen and these kind of technologies? Um, I think something interesting is like, for example, like there's like a scuba diving company, and they make um, they make they, they get oxygen via um, electrolysis, and you can you can like maybe like request from them the hydrogen, and then you can use the hydrogen for yourself or something along those lines. But I don't know if they do it now, but yeah, I think that's something cool. Then yeah, I don't I don't think the scuba divers use pure oxygen; mm -hmm. they use air, compressed okay. air. <laughs> yeah. They have a pure oxygen. Most people don't really like me. Most professionals are more afraid of pure oxygen than pure hydrogen. Because as an oxidizer, it can spontaneously combust. In fact, um, around the airplanes, because we used to fly, there's a, there's a vent port for the liquid oxygen that comes, you know, vents out of the airplane from time to time. And there's a red circle around it that says, do not touch. And you know why? Because if you have oil on your gloves when you're doing your pre-flight inspection and you have oil and it gets the pure oxygen, oh, it'll see. catch on fire. No lighter required, it'll just spontaneously combust. Wow. So you want to make sure with oxygen you're really it's more dangerous than uh, hydrogen. And for you? Uh, for me, I didn't know that you could take water and just be with it with houses to separate it to hydrogen and oxygen further from the field of fire. Um, I think it's really um, helps help our environment and transform the renewable energy process into making our world cleaner. I think, Kylie, did they steal all your ideas? Or? Well, actually, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like going off of um, Julie, but I was really surprised I'm working on it. No. Like, I have no idea that you can start yeah. to cook with. Some of the chef schools on the mainland are using it to cook with, and they like it because it's very directional. The heat goes right where you want it. And another good thing about hydrogen, there's no carbon in it, so it doesn't radiate the heat. So you don't heat up a whole kitchen except where you want the heat. It's very directional. And of course, whenever you burn hydrogen or you use it in a fuel cell, what comes off the exhaust? Water. Yeah. So it's just water. So if you start off with electrolysis and you electrolyze the, the water and split the hydrogen and oxygen, you end up with no carbon in that process because it's clean electricity yeah. from the sun. Yeah. And then when you put it back in the fuel cell to make electricity, there's no carbon in that process. So from beginning to end, you're just taking water and pure sunlight and making a fuel that you can move your car or cook with. And then no carbon pollution, no greenhouse gases, no nothing. And it's also good because if hydrogen happens to escape out of this tank and goes up in the air, it's just going to make clouds. It doesn't make anything else other than that. I mean, it's it's really basic. It's non-toxic. Um, it's only flammable when mixed with air, and it's easy to use, easy to work with, and as long as you follow the safety procedures, it's very safe. So, well, I really want to thank all of you for uh, for being on the show today. And, um, we'll get hot finishing up this project, and then we'll take some pictures and in a future show on Stan Energy Now, we'll have you back and. Uh, you can talk about some of your exploits, telling your story about hydrogen conversion and vehicles uh, to some folks uh, out there in the real world. And so people aren't afraid of hydrogen anymore. They can make a bunch of free. So I'm going to wrap it up today for Standard Energy Man. I thank you for being with us and our Center for Tomorrow's Leaders folks. Thanks for the folks in the studio that helped pull this together. And Christine over here, my IT wizard who made all this happen because I'm an analog brain in a digital world. And uh, she's, she's the one that makes it happen with Tyler, our intern. So thanks for being with us, and we'll see you next week on Stan Energy Man. Aloha.